Loom Curse has arrived. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we got the new Loon Curse box, which I'm sure will be a sellout for Games Workshop if Carry On Empire is uh, any indicator, so to speak. So this goes for $160 US, and you get 37 miniatures in it, so you get a good solid chunk to a sylvaneth army which we know is on the way judging by all the leaks earlier in the week and of course i'm sure we'll see some previews today at the brand new warhammer fest 2019 that's going to be happening and of course you got the gits over here as well which again got some really good start to a gits army you don't have any stabas but solid solid uh half armies right here the arch revenant is new and the loon boss on cave squig unfortunately is not a special character but still pretty cool uh because i don't think there was a model i have to check that correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but i don't remember there being a model for this in plastic at the very least overall it's great value uh 160 us you're going to get uh, roughly an estimated 300 and that's if the two special characters go for $35 or more chances are with the enraptress she went for $40 so who knows they might go for a little bit higher but enough about the box and how good of a value is let's actually open this bad boy up and take a look inside as you can see they have divvied it out I actually pulled this off the bottom already so you're going to get a big chunk that's going to come cellophane and shrink wrapped all together with all your rules and your instructions and separate things you're gonna get this part that actually is the poster to the front that um, they put this face down so hopefully this doesn't get all jacked up which it kind of did but that's okay so it's an indie little poster if you're in that sort of thing and then all of the new sprues which we've already showed you believe it or not on the same very same channel here all of these things already so you don't have to worry about any of that we will show you the new stuff here the cave squig or the loon boss on the cave squig here in a second and the arch revenants as well but from there all this has already been featured on the channel so check it out here on the youtubes and you will definitely find it there so we're not going to spend too much time talking on that so let's get to the campaign book the rules for the arch revenants uh, I think there's a little bit of updates to the Kurnoth Hunters, and I think that will... Oh, we're going to build them. We're definitely going to build them and show you how they compare to some existing Age of Sigmar models out there right now. So just like we've seen with some of the other starters out there, you are going to get these amazing Age of Sigmar War, War Scroll cards here. I really wish they did this for... Uh, 40k they haven't quite yet they've given us they've met us halfway they gave us a few war scroll cards or a few data cards but nothing this cool for 40k however uh included in this is the arch revenant the kurnoth hunters uh, i think just the normal kurnoth hunters they have all the things and all of the squiggies and the tree revenants uh, for Sylvaneth, sight on seat of the new book that's coming out, these guys are your battle lines. So it's actually good that you get two sets of these in this box right here. You're going to get all the instructions. And of course, we're going to take a closer look at the Arch Revenant and the Loon Boss here in a few. And then we've got the Loon Curse expansion campaign book, core rules, which we've seen before, and some rulers and markers that actually this part corresponds, as far as I could tell, to the missions in here because they're playing underground in a cave and then you've got some other stuff here which you could use um in your normal games because they're just command points and charge markers and stuff i don't know what the stranglehorn thicket is i gotta look that one up uh here in a second hopefully for everybody there but let's jump into the power uh, the campaign book and then check the build for the new models so the loon curse campaign book it's a it's a neat little book actually if you're into either one of these armies uh, I'm, I actually play Sylvanus. Uh, I don't. I never actually played with the model, so I can't say I played with my army. But I've got a painted Sylvanus army, and uh, I'm very excited to actually play with them now because I won't be mixing up any rules that I had learned previous. Although they look to be very similar, to be quite honest. I knew the Kurnoth Hunters were pretty good, but this is pretty cool. They got all the uh, the gallery in here of painted models, the new stuff, the old stuff, and there she is right there, the Arch Revenant. Uh, I guess it, any could have just an arch revenant but this one apparently is female from the looks of it and from the model as i'm about to show you had no idea didn't pick up on that uh through the pictures on the interwebs but there's three battle plans in here 
that you can play. They're little narratives. They, they play them underground in a uh, cave, which is kind of cool, so, as you would expect. So there's three of those, and then it gets into the War Scrolls themselves. Uh, well, I'll leave these up here so you can check it out and see. Maybe, maybe you play Gits. Maybe you're not going to buy one of these. Maybe you just want to play them at home. So there they are. You can check them all out. And they come with the tokens in here. And actually, I was I don't know why I didn't realize at first, probably because I've never actually played with them, but the Tanglehorn Thicket is the uh, ability of the Kurnoth Hunters. If they don't move, they can, or I think, except for to consolidate one inch or something, they can throw that up and reroll uh, ones on their armor saves. So that's kind of cool. Now there's two War Scrolls in here. There are no points cost for them. So these are just like that, hey, this is what's in the box. If you play with this, it's funsies kind of type deal. And then you've got the War Scrolls themselves. Like I said, it's just a loom boss on the giant cave squig. Hoppers, bounders with a Z, squiggards. And then there's the Archer Advent, and uh, man, she seems pretty good. I mean, she definitely bumps or buffs the Kurnoth Hunters for sure. And the <laughs> command ability ain't no such either. Um, the only drawback that I'm seeing, and again, haven't really played with Sylvaneth at all. Uh, played against them a couple times with my Beast Call Raiders. But what I'm noticing here is we've got kind of a low wound. So I'm not sure if that's going to be a good thing over here um but that remains to be seen although the little fly thing can take one of the wounds off there at the end if somebody tries to one shot you or something but it is what it is kurnoth hunters got a little bit of a buff i think they have uh where their swords of course they don't have it in here but their swords on a six up do immortal and then of course you can still do the trample underfoot you still have the where is it the thangle horn or Tanglehorn Thicket ability as well that we talked about. I'm sure there's something else that I've forgotten, but I don't don't write recall all the stuff right off the top of my head. And then here's the pitch battle profile. So the Arch Revenant is 100, Tree Revenant is a 30, which I think checks out, and Kurnoth Hunters are 200 for the three, which I forgot to check. And of course, they're not in the Solonith battle tone. That's how old these bad boys are. So let me pause it and grab my now that we know that I have no idea about anything to do with these guys, as much as I would like to think I do, the Kurnoth Hunters are actually 200 points in the General's Handbook 2018. So they didn't change much there. The Tree Revenants um, also have not changed. And there's actually a discount if you take uh, a larger block, a full block of them. A full block of 30 gets you a little bit of a discount. So that's cool. Kurnoth Hunters do not get you a discount at a max squad of 12. And it looks like the Archer Evidence is actually a little bit more than a branch, branch Width and a Branch Wraith. Those are both 80. So abilities are pretty good, so probably warranted the extra 20 point increase there. Um, although I don't have my... I don't have a quick reference to tell me how many wounds they have. But either way, that's enough about all this. So there's your Pitch Battle Profiles. I doubt they changed anything about the Gits because they just came out. Now, let's move on to the Sprues themselves. And here she is. So one sprue, which, you know, that's standard pretty much these days. Opening up the instruction book and you'll notice a few things here. Okay, so first off, this is your traditional little bit computer splicey, which doesn't surprise me for a model of uh, this caliber here. So leg, sort of like a half chest, a little bit more proof. This, this probably is a lady model. Um, and then you've got this half splice of the um, forest cloak on the back. It's really weird. The hair attaches to the back of the head. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's wacky, which doesn't seem too wacky when you consider how um, some of the revenants go together. I do like the base right off the bat. Uh, that would be cool to put on anything, but unfortunately you need it for this uh, Captain Morgan or Captain Morgette pose, I guess we'll say right here. And then the spear and the arm goes together pretty much like you would expect. Now, what I, another thing I do like is this is actually something that technically gets air quotes removed during the game if you so desire her to not take the final wound. And it looks to be slotted in there. So maybe it can pop on and pop off. I don't know yet, but that might be something to definitely check out. So there it is. And there's the war scroll if you haven't seen it yet and the different languages. Now checking out the sprue before we go and actually make it or assemble this model. That's not it. That's a big squig. <laughs> checking out the sprue, you can see that it does indeed appear to be 
a little bit smaller of a model as you would expect from a female right there not sure how the cloak the cloak the two halves of the cloak are going to go together but gw's generally been pretty good about the splicing and hiding it along fold lines and different things the bug itself doesn't look that big but when you look at the wings right here it could be decently sized they don't like to be too intricately detailed now this is multi-part plastic out of nottingham this isn't chinese or anything like that so in theory the detail is good but we'll see here in a second when we get it all assembled and the arm and the leg everything pretty much looks like it's gonna slot in and it's got pretty good detail you know for a tree person so to speak so that looks pretty good now let's jump over and check out the squig since we already grabbed them and here's the loon boss on giant cave squig now somebody correct me in the comments if this model actually has existed in the past because i've already backpedaled like twice and i don't feel like keep backpedaling and saying this is the first time we've seen this because i think it is but i'm not gonna go on record saying that <laughs> so once you get it open and you start taking a look at the instructions here it goes together very similar to the little hopper guys except for it's not modular of course because you only pretty much assemble it one way there but it goes together as you would expect with the legs on the left and right and the, you know the tongue's kind of a separate piece and the front plate is kind of weird but I, I get why they did that there and then the rider goes together very much like the bounders or um what are the the little dudes little night dudes the wannabe night dudes i forget maybe those are the boundaries i forget they all start looking the same after a while but it goes together just like that and instead of like kind of riding in an upright position it's like at a, in a, an attack uh, position right there and then there's the war school so it seems to go together pretty simply um which remains to be seen i like the little uh oh there's that little spider crustacean moon Loon, loon spider, I guess we'll call it loon spider. Oh, they don't really show it here. Hmm. I guess he's just kind of right there and there's the thing and the thing. Oh, maybe it's all one piece. All right, well, we're about to find out. So here's the sprue and where's the loon spider? I want to see this thing. Oh no, it is in one piece. Did they? Hmm. Maybe they skipped that. So there it is. It's got the little spider crustacean and a little head and the front plate of the super squig. There he is left and right. Oh, you do glue them onto that. So, oh, okay, that's all one piece right there. Maybe I skipped over that in the instructions. Man, I am off today. Okay, so then all of the armor parts there and the big spear. So it looks like he might be a little bit bigger because he is an HQ level character. He might be a little bit bigger than those boundary guys, but not by much. I mean, it's, you know, uh, stab a bounder little goblin dudes really aren't that much bigger than the other ones it's not like orcs towering over their subordinates but we'll we'll find out here in a second let's all right let's let's cut them out and get them together so speaking of big boys there he is with his little moon guy looks pretty cool uh, nice. I mean, this is a this is a pretty sizable base, 40 millimeter base. Lo looks pretty fresh. So he's definitely bigger than his compatriots. And I didn't realize that they had two different weapons either. So it comes with both, and you can assemble it as such. So it goes together pretty well, and you can't see any seam lines for the most part, except for down the back right there, which you could use a little bit of that Tamiya thin glue or a little bit of Vallejo plastic putty to patch that up if you so desire. But again, it's pretty much out of, mostly out of line of sight, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Now, how does he compare up to other miniatures out there? Well, I just so happen to have one of my Sylvaneth models right here, and as you would expect, about, about as big as it should be right there. And then we've got, last but certainly not least, the Arch Revenant looking pretty fresh right there and i didn't realize i guess i already kind of knew and this might be why the confusion was there because it's very hard to tell that this is actually a lady um you don't really see the feature you know the right there you can kind of see where the hair is kind of going down over her chest and i mean let's just face it most elves are a little uh, what do we call them fey f-e-y <laughs> for the most part so they will have features that you would expect to see on both male and female right not you know the other features but just general features and i guess that kind of led led to it because from this pose it's really hard to tell and i don't even feel bad about that but you know now we know and well she looks great there's that seam down the back uh for the most part it's very hard to see 
I feel like there might have been a little bit of separation there. I just didn't allow the glue to dry quick enough, but I feel pretty, pretty confident in that, that you're not going to see any of that. So from there, there really isn't any other glaring issues. Now, messed up and glued the bug on the back. So I had to kind of pry it up, which is no big deal because I think it'll slot off just fine if you do want to remove it. But over time, that peg is probably just going to wear off. So honestly, you're probably just better off magnetizing it or uh, putting a small piece of tin right there so that you can kind of separate it and put the magnet in the, the back of that model right there. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet, but um, you know, if you want to hit me up here in a week or so, when I get around to it, uh, I will let you know because I think I'm going to need this model for my army, judging by the special rules for the Kurnoth Hunters. So that sizes up pretty well. Again, on a 40 mil base, and there's how it compares to Arch or to uh, the normal Revenants right there, which, you know, kind of makes sense. And again, I guess we should have kind of known based on the size of these models that this was probably a lady. And I'm a little embarrassed by that, but we are where we are right now, and there's nothing. Uh, nothing to be ashamed of. It's actually very, very hard to tell without without kind of staring at it or maybe looking at the 360 or the artwork or, you know, listening to a GW interview. But either way, it is definitely a lady for sure. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. So that's it for this one, y'all. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, I'm sure it will be a smash hit out there as both of these armies are extremely popular right now. And I can't wait to see the actual book for the Sylvaneth here in, uh, I imagine it's going to hit here in a few weeks. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.